Well, tonight we're down here at Kalani Beach, just past Warrnambool on the west coast of Victoria. We're going to do something a little bit different tonight. We're actually going to go spotlighting garfish and catch them inside a net. I'm going to try and capture the action from underwater and from above so you can actually understand how it works. So, Scotty, it's about 9 o'clock at night, freezing cold, it's the middle of winter. Hopefully we're going to find some gars, mate. You didn't drag us out here for nothing. Jeez, I hope so. <laughs> Alright, mate, let's go. So, Scotty, it's middle of winter right now. I mean, it's, what, the 27th of July, which really is probably the worst time of year for fishing. So, why are there so many gars around now? Oh, winter time's always usually a pretty good time along this part of the coast for gars. They tend to come in really close. And these are barrier reefs along the coast here, protect these small sandy bays. Yep. And the gars just love it. They come in here or they get chased in here by other fish. Yep. And night time's a great time to be able to come down and find them in really shallow water. So you need to find a really protected area because the swell at the moment is probably pushing one and a half metres on the open beaches, but it's still as a mill pond in here. Yeah, that's, that's the, the other big bonus as well. Yep. Uh, you've got nice calm water that you can wade around in pretty safely, mm -hmm. and that's really important, and uh, get away from those big swells. The, right, reefs, right. the reefs really break up those swells out the back. So. Fantastic. Well, let's find some. All right. <laughs> Have a look, this guy is not even moving. Straight there we into go. the net, that one. Absolutely no problem getting that one. Swim straight in. You can usually put about 10 or 15 in the net before you have to empty your net out too, so we'll just leave those ones in there for the moment. Yeah. And hopefully we'll find a bigger one. I couldn't be myself. There he is, there he is. Quick, quick. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're just walking along and every now and then just from out of the side a garfish comes in and actually starts headbutting the light and they really are super attracted to it. Some of them don't seem to be, some of them really get onto us. Here here's we go, a, here's a nice out here. one here. See if this guy will stand nice. Look, there's another one hitting my legs now. Here he comes, straight for the light, look at that. And in the net, it's too easy. We've probably got half a dozen in there now. So we're slowly picking them up. But they seem to be getting a bit more prolific as we move further down the beach. Look at this one, coming right under the light too. Now Scotty's onto it. You really need a light that's got about a 60 degree beam. It's a 50 watt halogen on the dive torch. and That's actually the same as what they use on most flounder lights. Now when you get a flounder light, you generally just connect it to a small motorbike battery. And you can tow it around in a, in a floating uh, bucket behind you. And when you load up your net, then you just empty them all into the bucket. Missed one there. Here we go, there's like a couple up ahead here. They're just so flighty, some of them. Might be, the, he's still on the surface. He is, if we can just sort of, if he just stops for a second. Oh, there's a couple, here comes one, oh, here comes this one. right between right, here. Yeah, I know, look, Scotty, right in front of me. There's two straight in front, right here. And there's another one. <laughs> here you go. Look at this. Oh, oh this. what a horse. He's a... Oh, he's <laughs> straight, straight in. Straight in the net. Right here, Scotty. <laughs> right here, mate. Oh, there's heaps. We've just hit the mother load. Look at this. Straight in. Look at that. Oh. Keep going, Scotty. Just keep swooping straight through them. <laughs> <laughs> right here in front of the light. Hang on, hang on. I'll get that oh, one. Scotty. Oh, that's this a ripper. One's... Here, look at this guy. Oh, it's going to hit. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to net the cameraman in a minute. <laughs> hang on, hang on, I'll just stop for a sec. There's heaps of them over oh, here. Look here. Right here, this. mate. Look at this. And this is what happens. They just look, stand they're hitting my spot. legs. Here we go, we'll just stand here for a second. Yeah, we'll just let this silt settle. Here they come, they're coming straight in for the light. And I noticed the same thing happened. We did a night dive a while back, and the guards were actually coming up and headbutting into, right into the camera light. And look, there's about six or seven more out there. So let's move into some clear water, Scotty. Just back yep, up over here. Slowly back up, yep. We'll see if okay. we can get them into the light here. And this is the best way to get them too, if you can bring them to you. Yep. It saves chasing them around, because usually they'll always get away if you have to chase them. Now you can see pretty easily just how you could catch your 40 gars in the space of 30 minutes doing this. All you gotta do is just get yourself right into a big patch of them like this. 
And once you get the hang of it, it's actually pretty easy. Well, just then we would have got 10 yeah, or 15 right. then. We've probably got 20 in the net at the moment. We'll empty that out pretty shortly into a little bag we've brought with us, a little hessian bag, and, uh, and we'll keep on going. No worries, mate. Travel light, that's the way to do it. Now, apart from a really good quality light to actually spot the gars, your next most important piece of equipment is your net. And this one's made by Hook'em. And you notice it's got an aluminium pole, but really importantly, it's got a stainless steel hoop. And it's got a flat section on the bottom, which allows you to run across the flat uh, floor of the ocean. A round hoop's actually not going to get as much net in the water. So this one's maximising the amount of space you can get, all the fish inside, and it's got a really deep fine mesh, which is really important because that way you don't have to keep emptying it out all the time, they'll just all stay in the bottom. So Scotty, how big a net can you actually use for, um, for or basically for scooping fish up like this? In uh, Victorian waters, in marine waters, you're allowed to use a net that's, that doesn't exceed 90 centimetres in width or yep. 90 centimetres in depth. So uh, this one's fine to use and uh, you're not allowed to use them within 30 metres of a creek or river mouth. Right, to take okay. fish. So we're, we're right here, we're in a sandy mm -hmm. bay, but uh, they're, they're two important things to remember when you're out using a dip net at night. And you can use them with or without the aid of a light, whether you're yep. catching gars at night or, or something else during the day. No worries, mate. Well, we've got a bit of beach to cover yet, yep. so let's get moving. Now sometimes while you're actually spotlighting for gars, you will see the odd flounder. and it's not that easy to get them in the net. The key though is, is to try and get the net around the front of them because they'll usually always dart away head first. Here's a guy right here, Scotty, right on the bottom. Oh yeah, right down there. There you go, got him. Got him. Nice one. And the one just over your side, right on your side there. Nice big one. Oh, that's a ripper. Oh, uh, right here, right here. We got that one. Scotty? Yep. Uh, I think he's going to get away from me, that one. No, I've got him blinded. I got him blinded, that's it. Nice. <laughs> well blinded now. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah, the flounder are very easy to spot. Oh, well, they're not easy to spot, but There's it's one not. right there, there's one right there, Scott. Oh, look at that. Right Fancy there. that. <laughs> of all the things, there's a flounder right there. All right, give his tail a bit of a tickle. All right, and we'll just push him in. Come on, in you go. You got, got him. Got him. Nice one, mate. Well done. That's not a bad size, actually. Good work. Nice one. Dinner plate size. Look at their eyes. See the eyes? Only small eyes. But when you see them on the bottom, if you can't see the outline of the flounder, because it's buried in the sand, the eyes will usually appear orange. Mm. And that, that's a dead giveaway as well, yep. so. All right, well done, Scotty. Worked out all right. It did too. Let's have a look at the uh, final tally score. Not a bad effort, really. We've got bunch of gars, and one nice flounder there. One thing I just always love about looking at flounders is you look at that, look how the mouth has never evolved to be, you know, sort of, I suppose, laterally across the fish's body. You've got two eyes on top and a sideways mouth. Amazing creature. Look at that, some of these gars are pretty good size. Look at that one. Probably close to 40 all up, so you can quite easily see how if you came out here, with your own torch, your own net set up well, you could easily get your 40 gars. Probably took us, what, 45 minutes? Yep. That's it, not a bad evening on the water. It was actually quite a lot of fun.